Hello and welcome to the Bat Cave, your secret hideout for brawl gameplay and deck tech videos. I'm your host, BlindBat8719. On today's for video, I'll be playing for you my Tiamat deck. Before I do, a small ask of my audience, click the subscribe button down below, help me grow. I just surpassed 80 subscribers and my one year anniversary is coming up in August. I'm hoping to get to 100 subscribers before my one year anniversary, so help me make that accomplishment happen. With the ask out of the way, Tiamat costs 2 and Wooburg for a legendary creature, Dragon God, flying. When Tiamat enters the battlefield, if you have cast it, search your library for the five dragon cards not named Tiamat that each have different names, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. So Tiamat was almost tailor-made as if for Brawl or Commander most likely, but still works really well in the Brawl format. And what I decided to do with her is to kind of make it almost combo-ish with the using Fires of Invention and Peripherals of Bronze Blooded. Fires of Invention frees up my mana so that I can use Peripherals Bronze Blood as activated ability to put red creatures into play. So the way things work out is hopefully Fires and Peripherals are already in play. I will cast Tiamat. Search up five dragons. Most notably probably Terror of the Peaks and Terror of Mount Velas. Now at this point Tiamat's in play. She's my first spell. I probably will then cast Terror of the Peaks for my second spell. And now, using with 7 mana at this point, get at least, I can use Perforos Activate ability to put in Terror of Mount Velas and probably, I don't know, Inferno, Star Mount, any one of the other dragons. Terror of Peaks will see those creatures come in. That'll deal the damage. But ultimately, because they have haste because of Perforos and they get snuck in, I have 4 flying creatures that hopefully are now double strikers that should deal enough damage to be able to kill my opponent in one turn. Now going over the dragons real quick, one of the ways I was building this deck is that because of this combo idea, the dragons in this deck have to have red. So I thought about playing some of the ones, uh, some of the few more like Belladros, I'm already blanking the other dragon, or uh, Quandrix from Strixhaven, but because I wanted to focus on this combo kind of aspect, uh, I excluded them because they don't have any red in their cost. And to make it easier for me too, I focus on the fact to try to make this like a Jun based deck where I'm splashing white and blue as I see fit. So Galazef uh, Prismari, again, all these are going to have red in them. It kind of adds a little bit of ramp. There's about like nine instants and sorceries in the deck. So the uh, treasure is more like going to be more of a one shot than an actual repeatable use. Imrishrim Predator is just a card I haven't had a chance to play a lot with, so I thought this would be a fun time to try to bring him into play. He kind of can avoid some board wipes or destruction effects by uh, becoming indestructible and me sacrificing another thing, and he'll get bigger the more he attacks. Goldspan Dragon is just a great inclusion in the deck. It ramps, and that's basically the best thing about him for the most part. Terror of the Peaks is just an awesome card. I'm be sad to lose this when rotation ends, but basically being able to deal damage whenever my creatures come in and a lot of the dragons are 4 plus power. It's just going to be really powerful to kind of, you know, interact with my opponent's face or their creatures. Corval Fae Curse King, I actually kind of forgot about when I was building this deck till I started searching up dragons. And he's, you know, really cool in that re uh, for this deck in that he can be able to draw me some more cards. Because there are times when the deck can maybe use a little bit of more card draw. But him being able to play him out, sacrifice, maybe a treasure token that I'm not using right now or some other thing that might have gone wrong by for my opponent... To be able to draw some cards is really awesome. Inferno of the Star Mounts is a new one from uh, Ventures in the Forgotten Realms. Flying Haste can't be countered, and then I could pump them up to be able to, if I, which somehow that happens, uh, deal 20 damage to any target. Probably is not going to happen because that's not how I built the deck. One of the things to keep in mind is that with Terror of the Peaks out and Inferno of the Star Mounts, what I can do is have Terror in play, cast Inferno, Terror trigger on the stack, pump Inferno's power to deal more than 6 damage to my target. So that's a little trick to keep in mind. Terror of Mount Velas, again, is more of a uh, finisher of sorts. I, I use this in my Magda deck uh, as a finisher for dragons to give creatures double strike. So that's pretty awesome. And Velamachus Lorehold, another hasty dragon that gives them card advantage by letting me cast an instant or sorcery. Uh, with mana value equal to or less than his power. I really don't have any ways of pumping his power, so I have about... Uh, I have a handful of choices that he can cast in the deck that could be useful. The other thing I want to do by cheating my creatures out will be using the Prismatic Bridge. I'm not opposed to using a Sika if that's the way the game is going, where I'm like, hmm, I probably could use the mana more than anything else. 
But if I happen to draw it mid-game, I'll probably try to cast the bridge to try to get that extra value out. Because of my, my getting more dragons out in a turn is amazing. And then I have Genesis Ultimatum in the deck to again try to cheat out uh, some of the big dragons in the deck. Next up I have is the removal package. So we have Heartless Sack. I wanted to check, stick with something that dealt with, uh, that was only single black in color for the moment. Because I figured it would be easier on a five color mana base. And I feel like Heartless Sack is still good enough in the format. Dragon's Fire is in here for flavor, but since I have a lot of dragons, instead of, it's, at baseline will deal three damage to something, but if I have a dragon in play or in my hand, it can deal that much damage, so the best, the most I could probably deal would be seven damage, but it can range anywhere between three to seven damage is a scale for Dragon's Fire, which is pretty awesome. Mythos of Nethroi lets me, is my catch-all. Uh, I'm in five colors, so I can make it destroy a creature for, you know, two and a black, or I can destroy a non-land permanent, uh, I pay the white and the green. Dorm's Wrath. I originally did have Draconic Intervention, but because that has an additional cost of exiling a sorcery or instant from my graveyard, I don't have a ton of those. So I feel that that, that meant that the card was dead in my hand more often than not. Storm's Wrath is, while it doesn't, it's not flavorful as much as Draconic. Uh, this one it will be more consistent at least, and that I think is better. Binding of the Old Gods. Destroys something, searches me up, or ramps me up. The death touch is kind of cute, but uh, it's not really, you know, it's it's nice. That's really all it is. The only, the best thing you can maybe say about it would be that tear of the peaks. Now, with if that, with when that's out, uh, can instantly kill anything with his ability. Even like a little two damage from a lotus cobra will kill something. Back for more does double duty it's kind of be a recursion effect dragons are expensive so it's in your tech stuck usually playing only one a turn so the idea of being able to bring something back from the graveyard and have it fight i think it just gives great value and it's a card i like playing with and i haven't had a lot of chances to play with it so it's in the deck ugin the spare dragon while technically is it has dragon in the title i wanted to have some dragon tribal he's a board wipe that's really what he's in is in here for uh, that and occasionally as an instant concede from my opponent. This is one I'm actually okay with rotating out in the fall when that happens. Next here are the protection spells. Heroic intervention to protect the board from either a lot mass target stuff or just make them indestructible. Selfless Glyph Weaver is in here again to give my other creatures indestructible. And if it's late enough in the game, I could use Deadly Vanity to uh, wipe out everything else and hopefully swing with Tiamat for some wins. And then Lorehold Command, basically because of the mode... Uh, creatures control get plus one plus oh and gain indestructible in haste the fact that they get indestructible it's a little cost money to keep up at five but i still like it that because well, all i need is like two or three dragons in play and i don't need to keep committing to the board i can just use lore hold command to try to keep them alive and then yeah however the other modes play out in the in the, in the situation for card advantage once upon a time it's banned in everything you see on the screen right now uh, standard, traditional, standard, singleton, historic, and traditional, historic. So I figure with this card, uh, let's play it. It's a free spell, potentially. And then it lets me find a land or a creature that I need. Tome of Legends, I plan on casting Tiamat and hopefully attacking with her. So this is a good card draw option that I can play out early and I can cons uh, keep reusing. Garrick's Uprising, like I said, a lot of the dragons have uh, are greater than poor, are four power or greater. So this way I'll be able to draw cards using this. And it also gives things uh, my dragons trample. Not a, a lot of them have trample. So this is really awesome such that uh, with all that power they can still get through and deal damage to my opponent. Prismari Command. Just the amount of... Op the, these modes are just really useful. I am... Uh, I've play, been played against this. I have an artifact deck that I have to play in Historic. And this one always hoses my deck. So I'm really mean with this card with the mode usually being... Deal two damage to your mana dork, and then destroy your artifact that's a mana rock and really hamper your mana development. That's usually what I'll do. But I'm, if I need to, I'll draw the two cards to get more, you know, better card selection and use it as a way to ramp out with that treasure token. And then for the mana fix, uh, sorry, for the mana ramp, we got Orb of Dragon Kind. It's flavorful. It basically acts as a signet if you played with any of those before from Ravnica. Basically does that. And then late in the game, if I have enough mana, and I need to find one of my dragons. I can just pay a red and sacrifice it to find a dragon. Elysian Carotid, Lotus Cobra, Arcane Signet, usual mana fixers in the deck. Cultivate to ramp out and draw up another land in my hand. Faber Elder is a card I don't usually play with that much, but this is really good in a five color deck. 
at minimum it's a three cost two two that lets me add two mana to my mana pool if i have tiamat out it adds it to five five that adds five mana so it's really awesome in that regard altar of the pantheon Tiamat is a god so i thought it'd be kind of flavorful and useful to kind of have this one out maybe occasionally gain some life replicating ring just because i like the fact that it can create more of itself if the game goes on long as opposed to spending six to uh uh kick a uh the dark the dark the indestructible one the sky, uh, skyclave relic i believe brunette master is a card i'm trying out in the deck i figure worst case scenario if i pay the four i give them one land but i ramp two and i get a land into my hand i just give them the color that they can't use for anything so it doesn't fix anything for them um, and then next up, I just want to discuss the mana base a little bit. Like I was saying before, this is basically a, a Jun based deck, so hence why I have a lot more green and red in the uh, as for my basics. I like um, because I'm running the Fable Passage. I like to have at least one of the other basics just so I have the ability to search it up if it's a needed color. And then the other thing I'm doing here is I'm playing four out of the five Triomes. Again, all the ones that have at least the Jun colors in there. Of green black and a little bit of black red and then all the snarls because i with since the triomes are all three basic land types or three basic land types the, the snarls should basically be able to come out and tap most of the time temple of malice because they don't have a uh a, this uh color pair in strixhaven i figured i got one of for the scry the world tree to fix my mana make everything in the same th uh once i get to six lands anything can tap for anything which is pretty awesome Command Tower does the same thing for the most part. Uh, Fatal Patch, like I said, for fixing. And the Temple of the Dragon Queen's more in here for flavor. I should be able to have it to come and play untap, or at least play it on a turn where it doesn't matter about being tapped, and just pick the color that's most necessary at the time. With the deck tech out of the way, let's jump into the arena for some brawls. This hand looks like a good start. I can't play the Faber Elder right away, but I can still do the Replicating Ring, which will get me to Faber Elder. So I'm going to keep this. I'm playing against a not OP player piloting a Volo Guide to Monsters deck. Uh, let's see. Let me start off by saying hello and leading off with the Triome. Volo is on the list of things that I want to build. I have him kind of in the works right now. Uh, hoping to get that out to you guys soon. Leading off with a turn one Fable Passage. Alright, so this mountain's going to do a lot of work, actually. So lead off with i don't have a green either so uh let's go with the frostbolt reveal the mountain play out tome of legends all right island and arcane signet from the opponent play out the fury calm snow reveal the mountain again go off with a replicating ring probably draw the card with temple at the end of my opponent's turn all right volo is it going to be in play? I'm going to draw the card. Catch your triome. Uh, can I get a Sika off? White, blue, black, green. Yeah, I could play a Sika here. I would love to play... That's a good question. Do I kill Volo now, or do I play out a Sika? I think we're going to kill the Volo, because that makes to me the most sense. So... Kill him for three. Because Volo will just get out of hand otherwise. Uh, play out this. Play out Fey Burler. Fey Burrow Elder. I think that's the best use of my mana. So the biggest issue I've had with testing with Volo so far has been that he you play him out right away, the opponent will just kill him. Because you see right here, they would have had double mana, quadruple mana, and all of this. So that would have been really bad. Um, one, two, sorry, I basically, let's see, uh, okay, this is messing me up, so green, white, probably will go with the world tree, because that means everything will tap for every color next turn, so play out the world tree, and then if I want my mana to work out, I think I have white, red, blue, black, green, yeah, so let's say, so let's go black, blue, white, red, Make this green. This way, then, I can kind of keep Vapor all up as a blocker. Um, not even as a blocker anymore. I can just swing out with her. Alright, and now I have the option. I could have played out the Selfless Glyph Weaver. 
I think at that point I'm just going to hold off because I don't really have to worry about... Okay, so I do have to worry about a couple of things. Ugin's a possibility now that I really looked at how much mana they have available to them. Thorn Mammoth was the one that I was thinking about. Yeah, that maybe I should play out the Cliff Weaver. So I'm going to... Uh, do I want to cycle this? I think I want to cycle this here. Because uh, if I can get a one that comes to play untapped, I think I'd rather like that. Right there. Would have gotten that into play. Okay. Yeah, that may have been a greedy play to cycle the land. But, I mean, I got the bridge. Okay, you got a counter on the top of that. Ah, oh, man. That that's, it hurts a little bit. Put that in the tap. The terror will probably die. So, let me play out the Trump Predator right now. I'm going to get hit for a lot next turn. And it's a shame that this is the one that ended up being... Uh, flipped into off of the bridge. Great Henge. There's Volo. Alright. Dormammus is going to fight the Terror. Ooh, he's going to fight the Predator. Alright, I'm fine with that. Alright, Corvold. I have uh, to sacrifice another permanent. Ooh. I'll get rid of the Tomb of Legends. He'll draw me a card. Ooh, Ugin. Okay. Garrick's Uprising. So I can draw a card with Garrick's Uprising. I can use Selfless Glyph Weaver to kind of keep the board, my creatures alive through all the Thorn Mammoth tricks. I have the Ugin to work towards as well. I could play out Tiamat. Those are my options for right now. I want to swing for the air. Start with that, maybe. Now, all right, so that actually did some bit of damage. That's 10. So I'm gonna go with Garrick's Uprising here. Heroic Intervention. That's just as good, actually. But I'm gonna hold on to that I wanted to play out the Glyph Weaver. I probably could have just hold them. As, as I'm making that play, I'm thinking maybe I could have held on to the Heroic Intervention. As oh, Nice, Karuga. As that would mean that uh, everything gets protected regardless. And then I can use the, the flip side of it if I get the land next turn, I believe. Alright, so he targets that. Wait. How come... Wait, what's... Did I hit something? Alright, I'm going to have to play that back when I... I thought I should have had an opportunity to respond to make everything indestructible. Yeah, so clearly I should have just used the heroic intervention at this point. Skewed swarm. Not good. Okay. And this is why we don't let Volo live. That was so... Small mistakes and misplays on my part. You know, double fierce impact triggers. Oh, only one. So there's probably... Is there an elf in play? Yeah. Yeah, there's the elf already in play. Alright, there's the Coggle to get rid of the bridge. So my opponent's discarding what they discard down right now. If I flip into one of my hasty dragons with a prismatic bridge, I should be able to take over the game right now. Goldspan Dragon, I think that does the trick. Alright, swing in. Yes, alrighty. Whew. Yeah, I was looking really bad. I kind of got lucky out of that one. Not OP player, thank you very much for the game. Let's go on to the next one. Alright, I'm going to keep this hand. Four lands is good. Binding, I can play a Seek on three or Garrick's Uprising. Playing against Orez, piloting a Niambi Esteem Speaker deck. So probably going to be a control deck. So being able to sneak in a god, um, the prismatic bridge will be tricky. Start off by saying hello to the opponent and leading off with the triome here. Right, Temple of Enlightenment uh, kept the one, scryed one on top. 
gonna play out the snarl. No need. I don't turn two play, so no need to reveal what's in my hand just yet. Opponent foretold a card, and uh, there's that. And I have to remember that Naomi has flash, so she can be sneaking her in in a moment. Play out. All right, so let's play out red. So it gives me one closer to the bridge. Do once upon a time as a free spell, because worst case, then I can get out Garrick's up ring, uh, uprising now. So the free spell here. What do I have in play? I think I have black. Blue, red, there's green, I need a white. So we'll take the planes. And then I'll go with the Garrick's Uprising right now. So yeah, right now I'm going to try to go for the God of the, uh, the Prismatic Bridge. I want to keep saying see a God of the Tree. I want to go for the Prismatic Bridge play here. Hoping that this will be something where point my sky can evaporate. Okay. Well, this actually isn't too terrible, because this means that I can play out Finding of the Old God. I have my black, I have my green, and then I can play out Finding. So let me kill that, get a 3-3 token, and then if I'm unimpeded, I get a land at least next turn. Now the question is, are the opponent going to hold up man? Alright, perfect. So I'm going to lock room if it's free and clear to play out the Prismatic Bridge. Go with the yeah, go with Ketria. I'm not goofing this up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna stick with I was gonna thought about the Fable Passage of playing that out to thin the deck. But it doesn't really matter about thinning the deck with the bridge, and I knew I had the mana perfectly, so there's no point. I think here I don't attack, mostly because they're going to block with the Psalm, and I don't want them drawing the card right now, because I'm in more of a control with the, having the bridge out right now. So plays to consider for next turn, so considering the Fable Passage will put me up to 7 mana for Tiamat. That is one, depending on what my opponent does and how the board looks, the plays we're looking at is playing out Tiamat to refill my hand. The other possibility would be to use uh, Cultivate and keep up Heroic Intervention. Charming Prince. All right, so now attacking may not be might be slightly better as with the binding will give everything death touch. If they choose to double block to kill the three three, I can just assign one point of damage to each creature. In which case, then they both die, and that actually works out pretty well in my favor. Opponent has up three mana. Let's see what I get. Terror of the Peaks. And it's such a shame that I do not have a creature I could put in. This will cost me three mana. And that leaves me four left over. Alright, so let me start by swinging in. Swing in for the 3-3. Three, three. Alright, so let me crack the fetch, see what I have left in my library for basics. Oh, I have plenty. I'm gonna go with red and green. Oh, get red, okay. So, cultivate. Let's go with green and let's go with swamp. Put the swamp into play. Green's in the hand. Or with Dragon Kind. So now I have two mana up for my heroic intervention. That if my opponent doesn't, you know, I can keep that up. And if my opponent doesn't do anything, I can always use Orb of Dragon Kind. What's kind of neat too with this setup is that red, red, double red, that if I happen to flip into Perforos, he will be active. He won't have haste because he doesn't give himself haste. But if he comes in, he'll be a creature, which I believe is either five or six power. Terror of the Peaks can then use to hit my opponent's face. Okay, my opponent is going to be doing the fast blinking thing. That's going to be fun. But depending on how they do it, they could just do solemnly get lands. Alright, so they're just doing that. That's smart. So they do Charming Prince, then exile that. They would be down a blocker.
I'm not going to crack the orb here. Actually, uh, I'm going to gamble with the orb. No, nah, no, nah, don't gamble. I don't. Because I don't want to lose. The Terror of the Peaks is really awesome right now. I'm just going to go straight to my opponent's face with this. So I think this might be the win here right now. Oh, I should have put it on. Out on me. I should have put that on full control mode. Because that would have been a lot more damage otherwise. It would have committed me to another play, but it would have been a lot more damage. World Tree, yes. That was a mistake on my part, and I'm kind of annoyed. Swing out. Alright, how much red do I have to pump? A lot, actually. Use that red up. Yeah, so I should have put that... So I, I, I have to realize, so it was something like this where I was saying Tear the Peaks and Inferno of the Sun. I had to put it in full control mode in order for that to actually work, I would say. That's 9. 9 and 5 is 14. 15. Sixteen. I think I'm gonna leave it at sixteen there. Seventeen. Eighteen. Ooh, I get kind of cool. Actually, we'll do that then. Red. And this lets me double up and still keep two up for the. Oh, did it really just do that to me? Oh man. I thought this had any combination of colors. Oh well. That's annoying. It's a miss. Oh, that would have been lethal for the misclick. Crap. Oh, they didn't block at all. Okay. Whew. I thought they were... Okay. Alrighty. Orez, thank you very much for the game. Let's go on to the next one. Alrighty. I'm going first here. It's a little bit slow, but I think this is... I could be really greedy and try to use Once Upon a Time to find a forest or an island to make Lotus Corp come into play untapped. But I think this, I got some early stuff. I should be able to cast my things. I'm going to keep this one. Playing against Kimmy potting a Rada Heart of Keld deck. So this one might be, again, a little bit of a risk. Rada's usually an aggressive deck with a landfall one. I'm going to start by saying hello and play out the Temple of Malice first. A Snarl on top. Eh, keep the lands. Keep them flowing. I can go risky and play out Once Upon a Time first to try to hit something to make Lotus Cover Corner play untapped. Or I can wait a turn, and I think that's really what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait the turn, it's no rush. The longer I wait on Once Upon a Time, the better it gets. All right, we'll just see Inherited from the opponent, Replicating Ring. So I'm gonna be playing out Lotus Cobra now. So I would say start with Once Upon a Time with the alternate cost. Let me go with the Zagreb Triome here. Because I can reveal that for this. Play that out. Lotus Cobra. Reveal the Triome. Red for a Dragon's Fire. Uh, decline. We don't need the extra additional cost. And just deal three damage to that right now. Arcane Signet. Land. Tangle Twilight Horn. Alright. So, Nethro, I'm not going to blow this one up. I'm going to hold on to it for a Nethroi here. Three mana. I think just playing out the Replicating Ring. And I think even... Let's see who he values more. I mean, I'm going to be... This is a little bit of a risky play. But I think he values his mana a lot more. So I was willing to make that risk. Light. And then nothing happens. So now I think let's start getting a little adventurous thinking about how fast soon we can cast Team Out. So here's four, five, six, seven. Team Out can come out next turn. So I am definitely going to be making that play. Alright, opponent cultivates and then plays Chasm Doom Mammoth. Let's see what I have. I have uh, black, green, or black, blue, red. I need white. Let's just get white. Up to five, so I'm not going to overfill my hands. I like what I have right now. So we're definitely going to get terror, terror, hasty, hasty. 
go with those four. No attacks. And with the landfall now, let's see. One, two, three, four. Five for terror. And then if I play a landfall, I have three left over. So I have a land that comes to play untapped, that's better. But worst case then with the three. Oh, swamp, perfect, okay. So I play out terror. Oh, I think I only get three out of this. Okay, all right, and the opponent just scoops up from the value. All right, Kimmy, thank you very much for the game. Let's go on to the next one. So this hand might be a little bit of a risk of a keep because of the two lands and the Illyssian and Caritid play, but that would get me to Binding of the Old Gods and kind of pull me even. Playing against JDB Skake SKX, I don't know how to, Jadab Skax, uh, piloting a Volo Guide to Monsters deck. So I don't expect really early interaction with my opponent per se, so I'm gonna keep this. All right, opponent plays a force. I'm gonna start off by saying hello and lead off with my own force so I don't mess this up and forget. Our opponent leads with Tangled Floor Hedon. Play out the island for myself and then go with my own character. It's a very similar plays here. He will get out of Volo. I will get out at Binding of the Old Gods to so kill their Volo. So you get a forest in hand, that's good. See, this is the right problem that I ran into when I was practicing with my own Volo deck. Is that again, you play him out on four, you just kind of expose him to getting killed every time, and then you kind of feel bad because your strategy is like, oh, I'm gonna play Volo here, and then, you know, double, double, double. Um, I mean, granted, you could argue the other way of saying that, well, by me playing him out on four, my opponent either has it or he doesn't. If they don't have it, it's really big. But I feel like most of the time your opponent does have it. He's a, what, a 3-2? So the the Stomp Giant will be able to just kill it anyway. So I think there's just a lot of removal right now for Volo where you're almost better off, uh, unfortunately, making it more like a ramp deck where you want to be able to play him out with something small at the same time as opposed to always thinking go big. So like this probably would have been the better if he had this in hand. I think my opponent should have played this as their turn four play. So this way they would have had four and then maybe a three drop they could have played at the same time. Let me go with the red one so I can start working towards the storm trap. Now this gets to be interesting. I could try I've been I'm meaning to try out the Verdant Mastery, so this might be the spot to do it in. Because yes, I'm gonna give them a land. But I think what they're going to end up doing with it is not play anything out. They'll play out Volo again. Play the alternate cost. So I want to make sure I have a mountain for me. Uh, I do have a white source floating around. I don't. I have, my creature right now is the white source. Uh, what do I have? Uh, go with that. Black. I got plenty of green. So I'll go with another red. So I'll give my opponent. Under an opponent, I'll give them a mount that they can't use. And the two that I want to put into play would be Mountain and Plains. Swamp goes to my hand. Get to play out the Swamp even. So what I'm hoping... Now again, I probably could have looked into maybe getting another... Instead of getting a Plains, go for another Swamp for the Cliff Weaver. Or find it. That's cute. I like him. But I think what I might end up doing here, depending on the mana constraints... It's Four. This is a four, right? Yeah. So four. One, two, three, four. So if I draw the land here, Vassal Detroit, nice. So I definitely have to use Storm's Wrath here. Fable Passage. Okay. So let's see. I think I get it. Do I get another red here? I only have the one swamp, so I get another red here. So I think the best play I can do here, if I use Lorehold Command. All right, so let's use Lorehold Command to give things indestructible, create token to make things indestructible. And then next up, I'm gonna use Storm's Wrath. One side board wipe and then swing in. This way they now kind of cut off some of the Thassa abilities for a little bit. And now, uh, pending, uh, the question is, how much counter magic do I expect my opponent to have? 
I probably have enough mana at this point that Tiamat is going to be a result. If I don't, if it dies this turn, I can, or it gets countered this turn, I will be able to replay her out next turn with no problems. Two Lotus Cobra is pretty nice. Temple of the Dragon Queen. So if I were to do this, this leaves me with four mana left over. I think I'm going to name black here. One, go with black. If actually, can I do this? If this gives a four, four, one, two, three, four, five, a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, yeah, so I'm going to go with gold span here. Swing with gold span. And the three, two. And the reason why I'm swinging with the three, two is that I want them to block with one of the Lotus Cobra tokens. Because I don't want them to get double mana next turn. And now I can refill my hand by playing Tiamat. By cashing in on everything. So my opponent would need to have a Thorn Mammoth, which may or may not be as great. So definitely want to grab Terror. Want to grab a Hello Terror. Inferno. Bellamachus for Haste. Eh, this one gets tricky. Uh, let's go with... Lo I'm going to go with the cheaper one. Now, if happened to draw Fires here or Perforos, it'd be kind of sweet and in business at this point. Now this, destroy all others. So Elder Gargaroth. Now do I have, no, I do have Triple Black. So I think here, now that's actually, Iron Scale Hydra is a fun one. That's kind of cool. So my opponent will probably blink out the Gargaroth here. I don't know whether he would go for Light, probably doesn't. Okay. So I think at this point we're going to use the Glyph Weaver to take care of business, I would say. Because I really don't need the gold, and I think me getting rid of my opponent's board right now, my Tiamat, is a lot nicer. And the opponent concedes. Alrighty. JDBSKX, thank you very much for the game. Let's go on to the next one. Alrighty, and that is the video for today. Overall, the win-loss record was 6-4 and four with Tiamat. I had a lot of fun with her. Wasn't able to get the combo to go off on screen, but she definitely is powerful enough that by, sometimes by just refilling the hand in the, to the late game, when my opponent thinks we're both at 2-2 two and two cards in hand, then I play her out and go back up to 7 cards, and they still got 2 and not enough answers for all the dragons in my hand. They tend to concede, which is I'm fine with. A win is a win, and I think that's a fun way to go about it as well. Some things that I might want to consider... I was just looking at some games I had, like, my, especially one of the games I had could use a little more card draw. So as much as I'm trying to splash, maybe cut Galazef for the new uh, Desert Doom. I cannot pronounce his first name. Ixamyth, I think it is. The Mono Blue Dragon might be an on-theme way to kind of draw some cards later on. Or, like, in the mid-game, if I don't get, if not, if it's not a good place to be able to cast Tiamat. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments section down below. What cards should I change out? What suggestions do you have for me? How would you build your own Tiamat deck? Let me know also down there what was your favorite game that I played for you today. If you like today's video, click the thumbs up icon down below. If you really like what I'm doing, consider subscribing to the channel to help me grow. If you like the deck list, please share it with your friends. Greatly appreciate all that stuff. And as always, thank you for visiting the Batcave and have a great day. Mm -hmm.